Good morning, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at uh, CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for the trading session we have today, the Thursday, the 4th of October 2018. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal Signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. Be sure to download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so in terms of uh, European markets today gapping down, or given the fact that US yields certainly spiking over out on the back of Mr. Powell's comments of raising rates, okay, dollar certainly surging as well, Aussie hitting a 2016 low, Kiwis getting uh, pounded, uh, we've got uh, the euro certainly under immense pressure, even though we did get a reprieve regarding the uh, Italian uh, deficit crisis, okay, so the Italians certainly uh, obviously backing, uh, backing down in terms of their deficit being above that 2% threshold. Okay, so uh, that's the status quo. Uh, in terms of uh, the uh, economic calendar for the day ahead, okay, so overnight, uh, Aussie exports certainly came in, the trade balance certainly came, uh, exports came in more or less in line, and the trade balance certainly was uh, pro, uh, was certainly bullish from my understanding anyway, uh, but yet the, mar the Aussie certainly has fallen lower, given the fact that US data, given the uh, job data yesterday from the US, and obviously uh, Mr. Powell's comments as well certainly were interpreted as being hawkish and therefore raising rates, which in turn obviously caused the S&P to fall quite sharply as well. The S&P double top certainly is in for now. Uh, watch out with regards to that. And again, given the fact that we've got that interest rate argument, okay, rates going higher, certainly hurting the potential growth of the S&P. So watch out for that potential double top. That certainly could be interpreted as a potential key market top for the Europe or key market reverse for European indices as well. So let's see how uh, how that's played out. Okay, in terms of the support, you've got 2914 gap fill, and then obviously you've got 2910 below. I've actually just gone long on the SP at 2910, certainly looking for a pop now. It's not all bearish for European indices, given the fact that we've got uh, Italian concerns certainly alleviated to a certain degree. Uh, a stronger dollar obviously causes the euro to fall, which in turn helps the European export. So and that certainly will help the German DAX, which is an export machine. So given the fact that we've had this slide, okay, as you can see back down to 1.14, obviously there's an inverted head and shoulders brewing here. You can clearly see that, okay. Uh, but the US dollar must give, so bear that in mind. It doesn't necessarily mean that this pattern will play out. You could certainly see a reversal quite sharply lower as well, back down to 1.13 and even potentially making a new low. So again, it's not a given, okay. So given the fact that the euro was at 1.18 not so long ago, we were down to what below 1.15. That certainly will spur exports, and that should certainly help the Eurozone economy from my interpretation and my understanding. Therefore, I'm actually just gone long on the uh, Euro stocks at 3390. Okay, now in terms of the rest of the day, uh, nothing out of Europe as such. Okay, it's more of a US centric uh, data uh, mining or data field today. It's uh, challenging job clots, jobless claims, continuing jobless claims. We've got Mr. Fed Qual speaking, uh, factory orders, uh, and that's literally it. But you do have Mr. Courier speaking at uh, 6 p.m., so watch out if you are trading the euro there. Again, Asian markets certainly under pressure, U.S. markets under pressure, uh, and with whether or not that, that pressure can actually feed through into Europe. Now, having said that, Europe certainly has taken uh, and factored in a lot of bearish news already, okay? So one would argue that uh, certainly right for a short squeeze. Okay, in terms of the German DAX here, uh, yesterday we held that double bottom at 12,240. Currently trading at 12, two, well, 12,200, sorry. Uh, currently trading at a 12,240 zone. I was expecting that gap fill to close at 12,340 in the back of obviously a reprieve from Italy. Okay, but for now, let's see if we can, uh, we, if we do even attempt to test the lows at 12,210. Uh, you've got a gap fill above at 12,340. That will be my ultimate target. That's a target that I'll certainly be expecting to uh, play out. In terms of the French CAC, again, we did hit a closer gap yesterday. There is a head and shoulders formation forming here, so just bear that in mind. Okay, on the 60-minute chart, gives you an insight. Uh, moving to a 10-minute chart, as you can see here, we close the gap. Uh, gap fill, obviously, uh, is a key resistance. We actually closed the gap yesterday, so it was a battle. It was a, uh, it was a move between two gaps yesterday on the French CAC. Uh, so again, it shows you how powerful technicals can actually be. Okay, so you're using your uh, diagonal trend line analysis. Again, you're looking at support. Currently trading at the uh, 5260 zone. So again, looking to potentially bounce off this 5270. So watch out there. Uh, certainly looking for a bounce in the French CAC as well. Uh, in terms of the FTSE 100, now the FTSE 100 certainly will come under immense pressure given the fact that uh, it's a US dollar centric, uh, obviously, index given the fact that it's heavily weighted towards commodities. A rise in the dollar obviously hurts commodities. So you are looking for a potential flush. Now, the flush here is 7480. Currently, we're trading around 7480 anyway. So watch out for that potential flush there. Uh, there was a uh, 
a gap if I can recollect uh, okay so you've got this gap here that certainly potentially was what well, would potentially need to be closed need to be closed at 7475 then you've got the next support 7460 and the next support below that is seen at 7450 so let's see how the FTSE plays out again like I said it's a US dollar centric uh, index so be mindful of that okay so uh, that's basically the status quo now you also have the shambles regarding Brexit as well uh, Miss May's little uh, dodgy little dance yesterday I'm not sure what that's going to do. Okay, uh, she's been ridiculed and mocked. I mean, uh, is there a level that anybody can actually get mocked um, and ridiculed? I think she's certainly exceeded those boundaries as well. Um, really an incompetent party. I've been saying this for quite some time now. Uh, again, bear in mind, I did actually vote Conservative previously for Mr. For Mr. Cameron. Obviously, ever since then, it's gone downhill. So, okay, so uh, basically, you've got this uh, expanding contracting wedge in a 10-minute chart. Uh, Again, given yesterday's uh, potential key resistance that this uh, uh, 7526 and 7525 zone, uh, a potential sell off was certainly expected to a large extent. We've got down to 7480 now, and then you've got a gap fill at 7475, potentially looking for a bounce there. If that fails, then you're at 7460, 7450, there are your zones. Okay, that's your play for today. Now, if the market obviously does turn bullish, you're looking to close the gap at 7510, uh, hit resistance 7525. Hit resistance 7533 and obviously hit resistance 7550. So again, both game, both sides of the equation certainly do come uh, into play. But given the fact that US equities certainly are down, you are looking at downside for now. Okay, I think that's a good summation. Really, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs, and uh, please uh, visit Trade Signal, download the latest trading app. Goodbye.